बेटा बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमान रहीम द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल पोजीशन प्रीवियसली नोन एज बैलेंस शीट बट द वर्ड बैलेंस शीट इज नो लॉन्गर यूज इट इज बीइंग आउटडेटेड बाय द इंटरनेशनल बॉडीज इंटरनेशनल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स सो ऑल द एग्जामिनेशन बॉडीज सो वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू यूज द वर्ड बैलेंस शीट एनी मोर इंस्टेड वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द वर्ड statement of financial position now let us discuss what is a statement and financial position and how do we make one statement of financial position is basically the vertical representation of accounting equation accounting equation that we studied in the childhood and it was assets is equal to capital plus liabilities okay so let me show you how to make a, an sofp short form is sofp although uh, we do not need to write we cannot write short forms abbreviations in the examination uh, we can uh, use while saying it okay so as the name of the owner is ard first of all we need to put the heading although usually the heading is mostly given in the examination questions so therefore we do not need to write the heading if instead the heading is not given we are going to write the heading like that first of all we are going to start with the name of the owner then the statement of financial position as at and at the end of the year date would be provided now as you can see there are three columns so they are not for debit or credit okay there are three columns so the accounting equation that we studied previously was assets equals capital plus liabilities now this is basically an accounting equation but in a different format okay in a vertical format so we are going to start with the word asset although we can skip the word asset uh, we have studied previously that there are two types of assets such as non current asset and current asset so first of all we are going to write non current assets now the three columns that they are we have made in the first column uh, for non current assets we are going to write the cost this means the cost of the non current asset that we have uh, bought then we have accumulated depreciation accumulated depreciation is my dear students the total depreciation till date okay also known as provision for depreciation now the third value that we do have is nbv net book value net book value is the remaining value uh, if we deduct accumulated depreciation from the original cost the value that is remaining in our books as of today is a uh, net book value as of 31st december end of the year now uh, let us suppose i am just uh, putting some dummy names of the assets uh, let us suppose we have land and building although most of the business have their own buildings some of them uh, take them on rent so in that case we do not own any land and building so if instead we have our own land and building so first of all we are going to write the cost this is the original amount that we paid for when we bought the building okay in the first place then uh, there is an accumulated depreciation now the accumulated depreciation uh, would be given in the trial balance or the list of balances in the exam but the accumulated depreciation or provision for depreciation that is given in the examination uh, is uh, till the last year now as you can see in this example the uh, year ends on december 21 but the ex in the exam the accumulated depreciation that is given is till 31st december 2020 okay that the end of the last year or the start of the current year that is 1st january 21 now what we need to do with the value that we already have we need to add this year's depreciation and how can we find this year depreciation for that you need to uh, learn to make an income statement okay we have already learned how to make an income statement and this year's depreciation that we have uh, solved in an income statement we need to add this value to the total depreciation previously let us suppose beta the total depreciation bhai right? the total depreciation that we do have previously was uh, 10000 and in this year we have depreciation 5000 so what we need to do we need to add up both of these in order to arrive at the total figure uh, that is 15000 okay so this is how we can calculate accumulated depreciation uh, so inshallah we are will be going through in detail when we are solving the question
So right now I'm just discussing the format. If I detect the accumulated depreciation from this cost, the value that is left over is NBV net book value. Now the second asset, uh, for example, we have motor vehicles. Now again, the motor vehicles cost would be given. Okay. If you have bought a new asset, we need to add up this as well. So the closing value that is balance CD of motor vehicles is this value. Now accumulated depreciation one figure was uh, should always be given in the trial balance list of balances. We need to start with the, that value and we need to add this year's depreciation that we have just calculated in an income statement. So if we add up both of these, the, the total would be accumulated again. And if we deduct the accumulated from the cost, we are left with NBV. Now similar would be the case with any other assets, for example, fiction fittings. So the cost and accumulated beta, we do not uh, need to total this cost and accumulated and we just need to total this net book value. Okay. If we add up the net book value column and this would be the total uh, value for non-current asset. Now this is the value that uh, we need and this is the total for non-current assets and we are not going to total the cost or accumulated column. Instead, we are always going to total the NBV column. Now after non-current assets, we are going to write current assets and in the current assets, first of all, we are going to write inventory. Okay, inventory or also pronounced as inventory, uh, we are going to write the closing inventory. Okay, the closing inventory that is inventory at the end of the year, we are going to write the inventory in the second column. Why? Because so that we can add up all of the current assets and we need to put it in the third column that is last column. After inventory, it would uh, we'll be writing trade receivables. Trade receivables are actually our credit customers whom we have sold goods on credit. So first of all, we need to write trade receivables and the question here arises in the mind of students that sir, why are you writing trade receivables in the first column instead of second column uh, beneath the inventory figure. Now uh, I've written it in the first column. Why? Because first of all, I need to deduct one more thing from this trade receivables and that is provision for doubtful debt. Okay. I need to deduct the provision for doubtful debt. So the provision percentage must be given. Let, let us suppose this is 10,000 and this is 500. So we need to apply 5% uh, on this 10,000 figure that is 500. Now the net value would be 9,500. Okay. After trade receivables beta, there would be, we'll be writing other receivables and other receivables is better better prepaid expense other receivables is prepaid expense other receivables we are going to write other receivables there can be two things better in other receivables uh, there can be prepaid expense or it can be accrued income prepaid expense or accrued income now after other receivables we are going to write bank bank balance and lastly we are going to write cash balance okay so these are all current assets now beta in current assets what we need to do we need to uh, in current assets uh, the sequence is important and the sequence is order by liquidity now what is liquidity beta liquidity means uh, that how long will it take to convert this current asset into cash now this is order by liquidity and this is basically descending order of liquidity now what is this uh, I can explain you by this way that beta uh, it takes uh, the longest time for inventory to sell and to turn into cash. Okay. But the trade receivables, it will take less time than inventory to be uh, collected from uh, amount collected from trade receivables and to convert into cash. Then other receivables prepaid expense or accrued income it will take lesser time than trade receivables. Then it will take much less time to take out the money from the bank, either to go through ATM or to write a check. It will take lesser time and it will take uh, even less time to take out money from our cash till or maybe our pockets. Okay. So it is basically reverse order of liquidity. And this is the order that we need to follow in the exam reverse order for liquidity. Okay, so, so beta, these are non-current assets and these are current assets. We need to add up both of these 
and the total value would be total of assets okay total of assets now after assets as you can see in the accounting equation we have capital and liabilities so the second heading that we are going to put uh, would be capital and liability and capital is also termed as equity so we can also put the heading equity and liability now sir how to calculate equity or capital for a sole trader basically right now we are studying sole trader accounts so in a sole trader when we are calculating when we are preparing an sofp we are going to start with opening capital now opening capital must always be given in the examination okay so the capital that is given in the question is always opening and closing capital is never given by the examination and closing capital needs to be find out uh, after opening capital we are going to add profit for the year and how would we calculate profit for the year sir uh, if the examiner is asking for sofp only statement of financial position only then the examiner must give you this figure that is profit for the year also previously known as net profit but if instead uh, the examiner has also told you instructed you to prepare an income statement then you can calculate profit or loss for the year with the help of an income statement we have already discussed how to make an income statement so the final value that is profit or loss we are going to carry forward this in an sfp so if we have a profit for the year we need to add this profit why because the profit increases our capital and if instead there is a loss for the year then this loss needs to be deducted why because loss decreases our capital during the year okay then we need to deduct one more thing that is drawings uh, we are aware what does drawing mean drawing means uh, whenever we take out anything from the business for personal use or home use it would be uh, termed as drawing so drawing either can be for cash or it can be through uh, checks or drawing can be for goods or maybe for non current asset so it doesn't matter anything that we take out from the business for our own use it would be termed as drawing and drawings basically decreases our capital so therefore we are going to deduct this drawing opening capital at profit less drawing then it would becomes this value and this is a closing capital although the examiner do not write the label as closing capital so we are also not writing labeling it as a closing capital and that is understood it's a closing capital first of all beta we did uh, assets we written assets then we wrote uh, capital and lastly we have liabilities so so the the way we have two types of non assets non current and current similarly we have two types of liabilities that is non current liabilities and current liabilities okay so we are going to write non current liabilities first uh, similarly the way we wrote non current assets first so non current liabilities are basically loans uh, that we have to pay after one year okay so if we are standing at the end of 2021 end of 20 uh, 21 so the loans that we need to pay in 22 would be current liability and the loans that we need to pay in 23 or onwards it would be a non current liability okay so we are writing the name of the loan uh, and the name should be uh, should also include percentage of the loan that is interest rate 10% although we do not need to uh, apply 10% right now we have already did this uh, application uh, while calculating interest expense while making an income statement but still we need to write 10% and 23 10% uh, it is the proper name of the loan that is we need to pay 10% interest each year on this loan and the loan needs to be repaid in 23 or maybe 24 and so onwards so this is non current liability after non current liabilities we have current liabilities current liability the liabilities that need to be paid in the next year if you are uh, uh, standing at the end of 21 then the liabilities that needs to be repaid in 22 would be current liabilities now as you can see in current asset beta we have trade receivables similarly in current liability we would write trade payables trade payables are basically as suppliers whom we have bought goods on credit okay and after trade receivable we we wrote other receivables similarly after trade payables we are going to write other payables other payables uh, contain two things it includes accrued expense 
uh, or it includes prepaid income okay we have already gone through accruals and prepayment topic so, uh, then lastly we can have a bank overdraft bank overdraft occurs when we take out more money from our bank than we actually own okay so the extra amount that we have withdrawn from our bank account needs to be returned to the bank and within a year so therefore it is termed as a bank overdraft so if the question mentions bank as credit so this means it's an overdraft okay so we need to add up all of these current liabilities i have written it in the second column therefore so that i can total it uh, in the third column lastly what we need to do the closing capital value then the non-current liability and current liabilities basically we are adding up capital and liabilities okay if we add up the capital liability this total should always match with total assets okay uh, this total asset should equate with total capital and liability why because this is basically the principle of accounting equation which states that assets is equal to capital and liability okay if the total assets matches with total capital and liabilities or total equity and liabilities means our sofp is balanced so uh, most of the time you heard uh, accounting students saying that uh, my SOF, sofp is not balancing or my balance sheet balance and it's a moment of uh, pride for all the accountants then their their sofp has been balanced so the sofp balance means assets always equal capital and liabilities okay so in the next lesson beta we are inshallah going to uh, prepare an sofp and see how we make it uh, in an examination